Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. If Carl Frotch comes out of retirement and fights Janady Golovkin, I'm going to go to the casino and I'm going to place a bet on the smaller man, Janady Golovkin. Right? Understand, height and weight are not the be-all, end-all. Right? There are other things at play. I believe Golovkin does better against bigger men than smaller men. Golovkin's 5'10 and a half. Carl Frotch is 6'1. Right? I also think Golovkin is too hard to handle because of his mastery of spacing. For a guy who's been out of the ring for more than a year. Carl Frotch's last fight against George Groves was May 31st, 2014. He's been out of the ring. The kind of fighter who would give him a hard time. And let's be clear, Frotch has had a hard time with some guys who spatially can keep him at distance. Right? Andre Durrell. Jermaine Taylor, right? I understand Carl Frotch knocks out Taylor in the last round. What I want you to do is to look at the early part of that fight, right? Guys who move around the ring and can keep a distance from Carl Frotch are the ones who trouble him, right? Let's just look at Frotch's opponents. Understand how George Groves gets stopped his last fight, a fight I think Groves left on the table. George Groves, foolishly, is up against the ropes. He allows Carl to come right up on him. Right? Groves, who has great legs, right? Or at least had great legs when he was with Adam Booth, and who has a jab, and who used to know how to move, somehow got caught up in the moment and started trading too much with Carl Frotch. Right? Look at some of the other guys. Mikael Kessler. He's a guy you can touch with a jab. I would argue that Lucien Boutte saw Frotch come over to him when he was by the ropes. And Boutte thought he could handle Frotch there. I thought Boutte fought a poor fight. Right? Andre Ward comes inside to rough up Carl Frotch. Right? Some of the other guys, Glenn Johnson was there really to trade with Carl Frotch. Now understand, none of these guys, in my opinion, fights the way Gennady Golovkin fights. First, let me say this. I don't believe Golovkin wants you to fight him inside. He doesn't like to fight inside. He's a guy who likes to extend his arms. Right? He wants to be outside. He doesn't even want to clinch you. He doesn't want you clinching him. Right? Look at the absence of clinching in his fight against Martin Murray. Right? Rather, he wants you outside and he doesn't show you the angles of his punches and he throws punches at odd angles. Even though he has a roughly 90% KO ratio, he starts cautiously, right? What he wants to do is have space between you and him. I think Carl Frotch would have a hard time undoing the spacing. He wants space between you and him. Then he, when he steps into anything remotely resembling your wheelhouse, he wants to throw power punches. Right? To me, it's like fighting a ghost. Imagine being out of the ring. Then you get back in the ring and you're fighting a guy who's outside. Not inside. Not an arm's length away. More than an arm's length away. I'll agree. Golovkin doesn't really move his head that much. I'll agree with that. But he's hard to find, especially if you're a taller guy. Carl Frotch, who's not blessed with that much quickness, that much hand speed, that much foot speed. Cal Frotch would be walking into traps, wouldn't he? 
Golovkin leads with power shots. He's not a jabber. Right? He leads with power shots. The kind of guy who I feel would give Golovkin a hard time would be a Miguel Cotto. A guy with foot speed who can suddenly dart underneath. Get inside on Golovkin. Give him a hard time. Frotch isn't cat quick like that. When you see Frotch inside, usually it's a war of attrition. Right? The other guy and him, Mikel Kessler and him, decide, hey, we're going to duke it out right here. Right? Frotch isn't the kind of guy who surprises you inside unless he lands a bomb and then jumps inside. So, while I'll agree that Frotch's jab would be bothersome for Golovkin, Right? Understand the flip side of a good jab is it's a countering opportunity. Right? I think Golovkin would use the spacing, use Frotch's attempt to close the spacing against Frotch. I don't think Frotch would ever get too close to Golovkin. I don't think the fight would be high volume. I think Golovkin would throw bombs from the outside until he lands something. Then he'll jump inside on Carl Frotch. Right? Then we'll find out that because Frotch has been in so many wars, and he has, right? Two fights against Groves. Two fights against Mikel Kessler. Right? Go back and look at the Brian McGee fight. That's a war. Right? Frotch has been in wars. Right? Even though both of these guys are in their 30s, I would say Golovkin is going to be the fresher fighter. Right? Let me say this, too. At one point, Abel Sanchez actually had Sergei Kovalev training with Golovkin. Right? Understand, Golovkin has been in the ring with bigger men. Aggressive men. Right? Golovkin was a spectacular amateur for a long time. Understand, Golovkin beat Andre Durrell. To get to the gold medal fight in the 2004 Olympics, he ended up losing. He got the silver. But understand, he's been world class for a long time. He's been in the ring with many bigger men. Many bigger men. Right, so to me, if Carl Frotch is serious about fighting Janady Golovkin, he's going to have to have a tune-up fight. He's going to have to reacclimate himself to fighting ghosts. Right, he's going to have to realize that this guy's harder to find in the ring than practically anybody else he's fought. Then he'll have to deal with the fact that Golovkin gets great leverage and throws punches from angles that are hard to figure out. Right? Golovkin's not the straightest puncher I've seen. Right? He'll throw punches on a loop. That's actually a competitive advantage for him because it makes it harder for him to block. I just think Golovkin is too hard of a matchup for a rich champion who just won the biggest fight of his career in front of 80,000 people at Wembley Stadium, who's been hanging out with the wife and kids for a year, who's been putting on suits and doing color commentary for British TV outlets. Now he's going to get in the ring with a middleweight champion who's unbeaten, with a greater than 90% KO ratio who does better against taller fighters. And let's face it, Frotch in his heyday was never able to move around the ring that quickly. I think he'd be a sitting duck for Gennady Golovkin. I would expect Golovkin to win that fight. Frotch was down just the fight before last against George Groves. He got hit with a bomb, and he got up. He was dazed and confused. Now, if you're down that early in a fight against Gennady Golovkin, what do you think your chances are of surviving the rest of the fight? I know Frotch has a great chin. I'm telling you the punches that hurt you are the punches you don't expect. I think anybody could hit. Carl Frotch, when he's expecting the punch, when he's inside showing toughness, and he could stiffen his neck and take it. But not when the guy is outside 
like Golovkin's going to be. Right? Too much spacing, too much inactivity for, for Frotch. Not enough hand speed and foot speed at this point in his career. I'd take Golovkin if that fight is announced today and if it's to take place in, let's say, three or four months, I'd take the middleweight champion. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me just add this to Understand, Ashida had a pretty good jab. You didn't really notice it against Golovkin, did you? Martin Murray has a pretty good jab. You didn't really notice it against Golovkin, did you? Right? The fact that Carl Frotch has a pretty good jab, why do you think you're going to notice it? Right? Ray Mancini, boxing great, fought Alexis Arguello, a uh, big-time warrior from the 1980s. He believes Frotch would simply be too big for Gennady Golovkin. That assumes Frotch is able to get close to actually lean on Golovkin and make size an issue. Tell me the Golovkin fight where you saw that happen. Let me hear from you. Hope you leave your comments here. I like Golovkin in the fight if it's made, you know, for Frotch's next fight. Now, I'll agree. If Frotch comes back, fights a few fights, right, gets himself back to being Carl Frotch, then I might think differently. But I'll tell you, fighters never age faster, in my opinion, than when they're semi-retired for a year, right? Just mentally, if you've just beaten George Groves in front of 80,000 people, you look in the bank, you're seeing several figures, you got the beautiful wife, you got the kids, you're thinking, great, my career has been a success. Coming back's harder than you think. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.